All right, tonight we're gonna do the uh, review on the Castaway IPA by Kona Brewing. Uh, they're based out of Hawaii, of course, where they originated. Um, I think they have a couple other brewing spots. Yeah, there's one in Oregon Washington and, and one in Oregon. Yeah, so. Um, anyway, yeah, it's a 6.0 alcohol content. IPA is kind of typical for those. So. But. Yeah, six percent um, original gravity is fourteen point three Play-Doh. Um, IBUs on it is uh, 50, 50, 50 IBUs. Um, quite a variety of hops. I know there's some. Um, there's uh, Galaxy. Millennium. There's uh, Chinook hops in there. Chinook's probably uh, one of the slightly more traditional bitter hop, bittering hops, I guess, that they're using. Um, it's also dry hopped with whole hop flowers. So what dry hopping does is uh, it's a little bit different than just adding hops to your boil, right? A little bit different than just having it um, as part of the original uh, recipe when you dry hop and you know people who brew or know what's going on probably know what I'm talking about but when you go to uh, condition the beer you'll throw hops in during the conditioning process when it's refrigerated and cold and just aging essentially right before it gets bottled or kegged well these hops don't ever boil so that means they don't really impart bitterness to the beer, but they impart a ton of hop flavor and aroma to the beer. Mm. So you get a ton of essence of the hops without adding more bitterness. And that is because if the hops don't boil, uh, the alpha acids don't change form. So what happens is in hops you have alpha acids. When they're boiled uh, or heated, they isomerize, which means they change form, sort of, chemically, right, mm -hmm. on a very basic level. Well, that makes them bitter. That creates the bitterness in the beer. They turn into from alpha acids to iso-alpha acids because they're isomerized. Yeah. Um, so when you dry hop, you, you don't have that isomerization process, uh, but you do get a ton of the flavor and uh, the aroma out of them, and it's just an awesome way to add a little bit more to IPAs or really any other beer that you want a good hot presence to without adding a ton of ton of bitterness. I mean, this is only 50 IBUs, which is absolutely respectable, um, but, you know, for kind of an American-style IPA, it's, you know, right in that kind of middle, mid-high region. Not Certainly not high at all. Um, but to me, you know, when you smell this, uh, and when you taste your first couple of sips, man, you really get a lot of hop out of it too. And it's and it's really fragrant, um, really floral, really aromatic, and that's that's a um, like a, a, a massive characteristic imparted through the through the dry hop process. I mean, smell that mm -hmm. citrusy, very pineappley, grapefruity, very grapefruity. Even has a real grapefruit kind of flavor up front. Yeah. Good hop bitterness. Tons of hop flavor up front <laughs> yeah. through the middle. There's a lot of flavor to it. Little malty in the finish. Mm -hmm. Little bit grainy, malty. Kind of all their beers. Well, the have aftertaste that, is definitely all, that malty. All their shit. beers yeah. have that kind of grain, like that raw grain kind of flavor at the end. Yeah. All it just them, kind dude. of sticks on the tongue. Them. Yeah, yeah, it does. It lingers nicely. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. After that long board, the last few of these beers have really been a pleasant surprise. Yeah, I, I, I think this is great. It smells amazing. Mm -hmm. The fire. Oh yeah. That thing's beautiful as shit. Next time we'll we'll turn oh, it around and we'll do that in back of us or to the side. Good idea. Yeah. Good idea. We'll have to put more wood on it here soon. Kona Castaway IPA, though. Um, 
so far two thumbs up for sure. Yeah, definitely. Oh. Okay. Ah. We're gonna make the noise because this ain't fucking. No. 